All right, let's come on in and get ourselves comfortable. Got our script. That's it's a little bit wrinkled because you know had to take two. Yeah, things happen, technical difficulties. But anyway, hey, uh, welcome to yet another episode of the weekly recap. I know I took a couple weeks off, did some other videos instead to you know keep you little baby birds fed. But uh, now we're back. We got some news. We're gonna dive right in. We're gonna dive in with an odd story, a funny story. Uh, we're gonna talk about The Sims. Let's get started here. So, the recent Sims, Sims 4, I think, I don't know, whatever it is, the current one, had an update, and apparently there's been a side effect slash glitch, whatever you wanna call it, with said update, uh, and it's causing The Sims uh, P to catch fire. So, so yeah, <laughs> there's really, I don't know, they'll probably patch it out, or maybe they won't. Maybe it's, they'll be like, hey, why not? But uh, maybe they'll just patch it and make it as an option where you can turn it on and off. But I just figured, why not? It's a weird little story to throw in there to get us started. Um, we'll get us put in on the, a good foot here. But we're going to go right from The Sims into something a little bit more dark. Yeah, The Last of Us, good. Things are actually working this time. Uh... It is June. It is June 6th, I think, right now, and 20 days from now, The Last of Us Part 2 will be coming out. So excited. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about, they recently uh, had a little article, and by them, I don't know if I used the word them, them, they, uh, being Naughty Dog, talked about the enemies and their dynamic system. Uh, what I mean by that is the enemies kind of know each other and will react accordingly. So if you kill somebody, his buddies might be calling out for him, go look for him. You know, there's an actual like relationship where they're, they care that their friend is missing. Uh, likewise, if you are attacking somebody and like you hurt them and they're dying, they might call out for their friends, but like, not just like, hey, over here or anything. It's more of a like, um, I'm going to use my own friends and there's a John help me. He got me or something, you know, like they would be reaching out to like, it just, it's weird how they described it, but I'm intrigued. Like, it doesn't seem like it's just going to be your standard interaction dialogue. It seems like there's going to be an extra layer. Um, they spent the time and effort and recording lines for these bits of code and whatnot in this game. And, uh, they're really pushing this to be something, uh, great. Last of Us is arguably my favorite game. It's right up there with a few others, but, and I, I plan on doing a video about that soonish. Um, and thank you for everybody that uh, did throw up a comment on the one question I asked, because I wanted to get feedback from some of your guys' favorite games. Uh, I'm gonna incorporate all that into a little project uh, that I will get done at some point. Not sure when, hopefully soon. Hopefully it won't fall to the waste uh, like the Resident Evil timeline did, because that's, I don't know if that's happening anymore. I think that boat has sailed, but I have all the material for it. I just haven't taken the time to put it together. Anyway, uh, Prey is back in the news. Prey, uh, the first one, really, really good. It was a 360... 360? Yeah, 360. I don't know what the new Xbox is called, I guess. What's the new Xbox called? It's not the 360. That was the... 360 and the PS3 went side by side. The one. Okay, there we go. I had a, I'm not an Xbox guy. I'm not a Microsoft guy. I have a Windows laptop. That's about it. But, um, anyway, Prey, the first one came out years ago for the 360. It was really good. Then Prey 2 went into development hell. It was going to eventually be a bounty hunter space sci-fi game. Then it went into more development hell and was bought by Arcane Studios who have done games like Dishonored, uh, and now it is coming out, or then it came out as Prey, just the same name, and was really good. It was a really good space uh, sci-fi game uh, revolving around these creatures known as Mimics that could take on the looks of items and such. Really good, not gonna ruin the ending. Good ending. Uh, but regardless, it is back in the news because there's talk of a listing that appeared that it might be, be it might be getting the VR treatment similar to Skyrim, Doom. So, yeah, Prey and VR could be pretty cool. Um, for the right price, you know, full price, eh, no. I waited till Skyrim dropped to 
a reasonable price. I think I paid like $20 on a flash sale because I don't want to pay full price for a game I've bought in too many times. Chris knows. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> but uh, Prey coming back in VR could be pretty cool. Controls, it'll be interesting to see if it's going to be DualShock or Xbox, whatever. Or if it's, well, no, no Xbox VR. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, like Oculus is going to use the motions. So who knows? Something to keep an eye on. Uh, in other video game news, Outer Worlds came out this last year. Really good. Kind of uh, made by Obsidian, who did Fallout New Vegas. Um, similar open world RPG. Uh, a little bit of a Mass Effect sprinkled on top with its buddy and like ally system. But I talk about it now because it just got ported to the Switch and it's apparently not good. The, I don't own a Switch, uh, there's not been a game out there yet for it that I want, that I can't get anywhere else, uh, like PS4, because that's what I tend to play on, and do projects on, because I'm a Sony guy, it's just how I am, sorry. But, uh, the port for the Switch is getting some bad reviews, mainly graphically, loading, it's having some issues rendering, um, one of the articles I read made me think of uh, Rage back on PS3, where it had a, a texture issue where I'd be looking one direction, everything is loaded in here. I pan this way real quick, and it seems like the textures lagged where it would be all smooth surfaces and then now the graphics. And so, yeah, if uh, it's having issues again, uh, it's a broken record at this point where Nintendo Wii, the Wii U, and now the Switch, they get these ports. Of these games that have come out for the PS4, the Xbox One, which I remember that time, uh, PC and all that, and they're just not that good. It seems like if you're gonna port some of these AAA titles, either you, you need to either spend the time and effort to actually get it ported properly, or just don't bother because you're releasing an inferior quality game on your system. And I feel bad. Like The Witcher, I don't know if they've patched it by now, but I heard that when it came out for the Wii, for the uh, Switch, it's very similar. Like, the concept of playing on the go is awesome if the games are, like, solid and play well, so. Yeah, that's going to be an ongoing struggle, especially with the PS5 and the Xbox. I have no clue what the new Xbox is called. I can't think of Project, Project something? Project S? Let's call it that. Why not? I don't know. So Andy, guess what's in the news again? Uh, <laughs> Dead Island 2 is, uh, it's back in the news. Um, the game that won't die, still being worked on according to the studios behind it, but the reason it's back in the news is apparently a 2015 build of it has leaked online and is playable. I say playable because it's really an early build and it's kind of broken, so... Which, I know, he'll be like, Andy would be like, oh, well, the game is going to be broken even at launch. Well, you might be right. I'm not one to disagree at this point. Uh, as much as I'd love to see Dead Island 2 come out and actually be good, I have a weird feeling it's not going to be. Especially because the studio that's working on it, if I, if the current studio that I heard is working on it, Sumo, they released Crackdown 3, and that game came out and it was, eh. So, that, yeah. They spent a lot of effort making a eh game. And with Dying Light and now Dying Light 2 coming out, kind of taking over as that first-person zombie survival, I, uh, we'll see. But hey, there's a leaked version of the 2015, so five year ago, five year ago model that has like a lot of placeholder textures and such, and yeah, so check it out. Maybe I don't know. I don't think I'm going to, but yeah, I just wanted to wanted to mention a little Dead Island because yeah, I like to. Speaking of games that uh, are dead, we're dead, not anymore. Kingdoms of Amalur, a game that really is, it came out, it was really good. Uh, it was rivaling Skyrim in like everything. It was just, not graphics, but it wasn't built on, it was built more like Fable graphics, which is fine. It did it, it served it well. Had a great open world, great leveling system. Um, apparently the game, if I remember correctly, was like made the Studio 343, no. Can't think of the studio's name, but I don't think it's that. He was like an ex-baseball player, and he put a lot of his like heart and soul into this game, and it showed. 
but legal issues, bankruptcy, so on and so forth, and it's the first, last, and only game from that studio. And I can't even think of the studio's name. It's not 343. That's the Halo guys. I don't know. Didn't look that part up. But regardless, it is coming back. So I'm not sure under what umbrella. I'll have to follow this one and look into it even more because I did not. I just saw the headline and wanted to talk about it. It was kind of a quick added on thing this week. But it is going to come out apparently as early as this August, be in a remastered version. I don't know if that's getting a full overhaul um, like Resident Evil 2 and 3 got, or if it's just going to be a port to the PS4, uh, Xbox One, and PC. But maybe PC. Eh, you could have fixes, bugs. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to see this game come back again and, and uh, how it's going to look. It was fun then, and it'll probably be fun now. So the only that game, Skyrim, and the only other one that was really like I rivaled with all of them was Dragon's Dogma. Another great game, very underrated. What else we got? Oh yeah, we got some movie news. I had to look this time because I had an issue. <laughs> issue on the last uh, take of this, but we're going good. Movie news. Sonic uh, was really good. It was a good movie. Jim Carrey probably made that movie. That and the fact that they actually like fixed his eyes. Because if they wouldn't have done that, his eyes and his human teeth that they originally were going to do, whoever built that and then decided that was correct was a uh, hoof. But regardless, the movie came out. It was awesome. It was very entertaining. Uh, the only stupid part of it is the when he was doing his little flossing, and he did it twice. You don't need, like, I know they did that to appease the, the children that are going to go see, oh, Fortnite! No. That I could do without, and then when you did it a second time, I had a little aneurysm in my brain. But, that said, the movie was really good. Jim Carrey just was being Jim Carrey. He, like, not, no spoilers, no spoilers, but by the end of it, he was, do, he was honing it in so well. Um, and again, no spoilers, but they set it up for a sequel. Hmm. And then they didn't really, like, there was talk that it wasn't going to get a sequel. You're like, eh. But now it is. So, it is officially getting a sequel. Um, I would love to see Jim Carrey be signed on again uh, to do Dr. Robotnik to continue that arc. Uh, how they ended it, I'd love them to expand on that more. They probably will, but I'll leave it at that. Because, you know, as Lucas says, I don't do spoilers. Unless I decide to, but I would tell them. Finally... Uh, last thing I want to talk about here today is Justice League America. Uh, it wasn't that good of a movie. <laughs> it really wasn't. Uh, digitally editing out um, Henry Cavill's mustache and and Cyborg, like his CG was garbage. And the story was garbage and the visuals were mm. uh, The only highlight of that entire movie, in my opinion, is Ezra Miller. Um, him as the Flash, I would, I still want to see him get his own Flash movie. The DC Universe, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, because they keep making stupid decisions. Uh, their animated movies are good. When their standalone stories are good. When they try to tie the scrap together, it's stupid. Um, the Joaquin Phoenix standalone Joker movie, great. Harley Quinn, even though it's kind of building off of, uh, some of the past ones, still pretty good on its own. But their universe is weird. They're not doing a good job like Marvel. Regardless, hey, uh, they're getting the Snyder Cut version coming out uh, in 2021, and it's going to apparently be exclusive at launch, I guess, to uh, HBO Max, whatever that is, HBO's new streaming service to compete with Disney or whatever, even though they have their own already, but whatever. That would be my cat puking. You all right? Nope, there's a little bit more. We'll be attending to that in a moment, so there's a little bonus clip for you. You okay, Barb? All right. We're almost done. Nope. One more. All right. They are going to be releasing a four-hour Zack Snyder cut of Justice League America coming out in 2021 exclusive to HBO Max. That's, that's all I got. I got to go deal with a uh, cat puke now. So 
Uh, <laughs> if you have anything you want to say, hit me up. There's the source. Great way to end this one, but as such is life. Uh, like, subscribe, you know, do those things, hit those buttons. Still working our way towards that giveaway. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> I'm going to go deal with this. Be safe, be kind. I'll see you next time.